on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. It is true, despite the downward pressure on crypto prices, the builders have been continuing to build. And the Ethereum core developers are no exception to this. So if you tune into the Cryptoverse regularly, well, you've probably heard me talk about this already, but on a couple of days, it will be upon us. It has finally arrived. I'm talking about the Ethereum hard fork upgrade known as Constantinople. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. Now, if you find this commentary of mine useful on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, then I'd very much appreciate it if you would help out and make the show sustainable by visiting the website. It's thecryptoverse.show. If you click on the big blue button in the top right hand corner, that'll take you through to Patreon, where you can help support the show and get a few bonuses for yourself. But for now, we're going to get into this information. So the Constantinople upgrade to Ethereum. I think Vitalik Buterin has actually been encouraging people not to use the word hard fork because that's got a bit of a controversial connotation to it. So he prefers to call it an upgrade because that's the intention behind this. So technically, at Ethereum block number 7,080,000, Ethereum will start using a new set of rules. So because these networks are consensus networks, everyone has to agree to the same set of rules. So after block 7,080,000, that's when all the Ethereum network uh, nodes agree to start using the new rules the very next block. So everyone needs to agree when it's going to happen so that everyone does it at the same time. So right now, there's this website called amberdata.io. It's amber as in the color. amberdata.io forward slash blocks forward slash 7,080,000. And you'll get um, a little countdown timer here. So it's not, like I said the other day, it's not clock time. It's roughly clock time, but it's specifically when Ethereum gets to block number 7,080,000. So I assume this clock time countdown timer is going to adjust you know, as it gets closer and closer to the time. So right now it might be counting down seconds as real seconds, but it might pause, you know, to, to realign itself as we go through. So that'll be more accurate as we get closer. It could be sooner or later than, than it says, because if blocks are faster or slower, you know, it'll shave some time off or add some on. But roughly it's going to be the 16th of January. I imagine it's going to be in that day somewhere. It just might be, you know, an hour uh, sooner or later. Now you can also monitor this in real time on this website called Forkmon, uh, forkmon fdevops.io. And if you go there, you've got this nice little very simple visualization of the Ethereum chain sh showing the, the most recent block and if there's any orphaned blocks and so on. And then it shows the major implementations of the Ethereum software, Geth and Parity, and their status as of right now. So that's for, the, you know, if you like the techie side of things, if you like to nerd out like I do, check that out. So. What the hell is Constantinople? You might, some people might be asking. Well, this is a software upgrade to the Ethereum network, just like you do a Windows update or whatever, except that um, in decentralized networks, if you're gonna upgrade the software, you have to coordinate it amongst all the parties. Um, that's to make sure that everyone remains in consensus. You can't just have one set of people operating on a new set of rules uh, because that then means there's two networks, right? The whole idea of a protocol, a protocol is a set of rules that everyone abides by. You've got people using two sets of rules. That's two separate networks, not good. So in order to prevent a network split, more on that in a minute, everyone needs to agree 7 million and 80 block number. We're gonna start, all of us are gonna start using the new block number. And if everyone does that, it's fine, right? The old chain just grinds to a halt because everyone abandons it and the new chain, it becomes Ethereum. So as an Ethereum user uh, or a hodler or an investor, what do you need to do? Well, if you use a, you hold your Ethereum inside a wallet um, that is a light wallet, meaning the, the Ethereum blockchain is hosted by a third party. Well, uh, so that would be things like if you have your crypto on an exchange, you know, the Coinbase, the Krakens, the Binances. If you use a web wallet like MetaMask or MyCrypto.com or MyEtherWallet. If you use a mobile app like the Coinbase wallet app or Status or the trust wallet, which is Binance, or if you use a hardware wallet like Trezor or Ledger or KeepKey, any of those circumstances, you'll be using a light wallet, which means someone else hosts the node for you, probably the company behind it, um, which means you don't need to do anything, right? Because they will centrally upgrade the software for all of their users. So you just sit tight and let them take care of things for you. 
The only thing to be aware of is some exchanges may pause deposits and withdrawals during the hard fork until they are happy that the network is stable. Don't panic. It's fine. It's just a security precaution on their on their uh, on their on their behalf. Yeah, on their behalf to make sure that your funds are protected. So don't panic if they decide to do that. Some might, some might not. But I'm just saying, just don't freak out if you see that happen. Okay. Now, moving on. If you're a node operator, if you host your own copy of the Ethereum blockchain, or if you're an Ethereum miner, well, you do need to take some action. You need to upgrade your software before block 7 million and 80,000. Okay. If you don't upgrade when block 7 million and 80,000 comes along, the vast majority of the network are going to start using a new rule and they're going to dart off in a new direction and you're going to be left on the old chain, you know, where maybe on your own, maybe with a few other people that are oblivious to the hard fork. So onto Constantinople itself. What does it do for us, right? How does it improve Ethereum exactly? If this is a software upgrade, what's it upgrading exactly? Well, there are five things that is going to be implemented in this. And as I said before, this is really some sort of real techie mechanics under the hood, which are preparing Ethereum for what will be much more significant and more obvious import performance improvements that we as users will feel. But if you're interested, here's the five. So the first one is that bitwise shifting <laughs> will is means that um, the cost to run certain types of code operations on Ethereum will drop from uh, the cost will drop from a gas cost of 35 to three. So that will make those types of transactions cheaper, which is good for users and good for everybody, right? The second thing is this thing called a uh, skinny create two, which is a feature that's needed for Ethereum to implement state channel networks like the lightning network. So that's again, a preparatory step for the future when we start using lightning network style layers on Ethereum. Uh, and that's a scaling thing that can mean Ethereum will scale to, you know, almost to infinity at that point. So the third one, there's this thing called EXT code hash, another new feature that makes it so that one smart contract can check the code or perform checks on other smart contracts using much less processing power. Right now, if one smart contract wants to check another one, it has to grab the entire code base and scan it. Whereas this EXT code hash means it can just take a fingerprint of that code and check it, which is much less resource intensive and therefore consumes much less gas, right? Number four is um, net gas metering for something called S store. Again, another change to greatly reduce the gas cost for certain types of functions. In my my understanding of this is I see this very simpler as like in an EOS transaction, some people have been criticizing blocktivity because it shows Ethereum, sorry, EOS doing like 30 or 40 million transactions a day, which isn't strictly true. Inside an EOS transaction, there can be like four or five different actions. So what blocktivity are counting are the individual actions, which makes the EOS metrics look like they're doing, it's doing more, because what's the transaction, right? Is it the transaction you know, as a piece with five operations inside it, or do you count each of the operations? Don't know. So basically an Ethereum, sorry, an EOS transaction can have five actions within it, but do you count the five or do you count the one? Anyway, so this this uh, fourth edition with the S store thingy, this is gonna allow Ethereum to do similar things. It's gonna allow multiple operations to happen within a single Ethereum transaction, but do it a lot cheaper in terms of gas cost. So that's ex absolutely excellent. It'll mean that you don't have to like, if you want to do five operations on Ethereum, you don't have to do five transactions. You can just do it as a, you know, a sub action within one transaction. So hopefully that's clear. And the fifth one is, this is the big one, a delay to the difficulty bomb and a reduction in the block reward. So I'd say that's two really, but let's talk about them. So the difficulty bomb is, um, you know, Ethereum's going to move from proof of work mining to proof of stake mining and to force everyone to switch to proof of stake. They're going to make the difficulty um, with which you can mine proof of work to skyrocket. So it was gradually increasing the difficulty on the uh, proof of work algorithm, making blocks get longer and longer and longer to process to the point where it would take an infinite amount of time to process a block. And that forces everyone to switch to a different mining, mining algorithm. Problem is um, the Ethereum proof of stake isn't ready yet. So this Constantinople hard fork is going to delay the um, the difficulty bomb increase by about 12 months. That's going to buy the developers more time 
to perfect the proof of stake code so that that upgrade can happen uh, with confidence, okay? And then the second part to this fifth feature is that the, the reward, the block reward for Ethereum is gonna drop from three Ethereum per block to two Ethereum per block. So you know the winning miner always gets some newly created cri uh, cryptocurrency. In Bitcoin, we know right now that's 12 and a half Bitcoin every 10 minutes, which is uh, Bitcoin's block time. Right now, every every 15 seconds or so, if you mine a, an Ethereum block, you get three Ether. Well, that's gonna drop to two Ether. So miner pay, right, the pay that Ethereum miners receive is, is gonna drop by about a third. Now this is interesting. So if you look historically, generally speaking, in the it's usually in the sort of six months prior to Bitcoin having its reward cut, you usually see a rally in the price. And that's been a historical pattern on Bitcoin. So you always see this a bit of a price pump. So there's speculation that Ethereum had a bit of a price pump all the way up to $160 recently. And some people are thinking, well, mentally, uh, our traders and investors thinking, well, mapping that over from Bitcoin saying, you know, cutting of the reward equals a price pump and then everyone's buying Ethereum because they think the same thing's going to happen. The trouble is the difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin is Bitcoin has an absolutely 100% predictable monetary policy. We know exactly how much the reward is going to be cut by when absolutely all the way to um, the point where all Bitcoins have been created. Whereas Ethereum doesn't work like that. It's the developers, almost like a central bank in a way, are adjusting their monetary policy, you know, um, not arbitrarily, but it's not entirely predictable like Bitcoin is. So let me round today's video off with just a few words of caution, because that I think that's my responsibility. So I've got four simple points here. Number one, whenever you've got this kind of, um, I won't call it chaos, but uncertainty in a, in a cryptocurrency network, scammers will attempt to exploit ignorance, okay? Because of a lack of understanding, right? So when I say ignorance, I don't mean people are ignorant intentionally. Ignorance just means you're not aware of something and that's not necessarily your fault. But it does mean that scammers full, know full well that most people don't understand these things in depth and will exploit that ignorance, right? By um, telling you a false version of the truth in order to get you to do a certain thing, which then leads to them stealing your money. So watch out for that. The second thing is opportunists, they're going to attempt to exploit gr exploit greed. So they may, it's a similar sort of thing, scammers, opportunists, they may attempt to exploit ignorance by saying, well, you know, this, this is going to be a network split. And that's why using the word hard fork is dangerous because most people think hard fork means, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash style or Ethereum, Ethereum classic. Is, is Ethereum going to split in two? It shouldn't do, right? If, if all goes well, it should be fine. But that doesn't stop the scammers and the opportunists trying to scare you into thinking that Ethereum is about to split in two and you can get some free money and then they can scam you out of your coins because it's not true. So watch out for those kinds of scams. And of course, the fudsters are going to fud about network splits. Uh, there's, there's stuff out there if you look for it, but just don't pay attention to it. Just my advice is just sti sit tight. Uh, sit, sit tight, stick to the established media outlets that you trust. And um, in a couple of days, it'll all have blown over and we'll have a new shiny upgrade to the Ethereum network. But that is all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, please go ahead, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, which I now have seven of, check out my online school. It's called Cryptoversity. Like it says here, invest in the world's number one asset, your own education. You can take a three day trial of Cryptoversity for just $1. So please check that out. If you don't like it, you can cancel. That's all I've got for you today. So I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.